Hello, everybody. Welcome to Game Ass. Thanks for joining me tonight on the show. We're just doing a quick, short little show tonight because um, I just did Game Ass not too long ago. So I uh, thought I would uh, chime in on um, some of the events that happened today. And um, so I appropriately called this show Love Story for that reason, as well as because Jason Dotley, whom we interviewed on the crew show, which I do with David from the 5 by 5 show and Ken from the Kim Boggle show. Um, we do that every week. We're going to be doing that again Thursday, by the way. Be sure to check us out on thecrewshow.net for that or on Star or on um, Spreaker, sorry, uh, on Thursday around, I think we're doing the show at 10 p.m., I'm pretty sure, but we may be doing it at 1 I don't know. I'll have to find out. Um, but be sure to check that show out. Um, Thursday, we're talking, it's my question. And the question is about love, actually. And so what a, an appropriate time to talk about um, this on the show as well. Um, but yeah, Jason, we interviewed Jason Dotley on that show. Thanks to David, who actually uh, got that interview with him. And um, we were fortunate enough for him to actually premiere his song on our little tiny show on the internet. No one actually heard it, any part of the song except for his producer and for he himself and a few people on the that he knew or whatever. I think he had told us that anyway. He was drinking at the time, so he said he was kind of he was kind of uh, open to sharing it with us. I think so. It was nice of him to do. But anyway, since his song was released today uh you can get your copy on itunes i put the link in the show description if you're interested um i decided that i would um in honor of his release uh actually play the song and i asked him if i could play it and he said yes so i want to make sure i got permission from him to play the song so he said yes i could play it he was very happy to have me play it and he said thank you so i'm going to play the song for you right now we'll come right back be right back i 
Okay, so that's the song. I apologize. I'm going to have to fix that problem. Obviously, it's still having the same issue with the double the double sound. So I'm going to fix that and play the song again in just a minute. Um, hopefully, while we uh, hopefully while we um, <laughs> while I do this. Sorry about that. I'll play it again though, uh, so you can hear it properly. Anyway, so um, that's the song "Love Story." So he's a great guy. Be sure you go buy it. The links in the chat or in the uh, show description. But before I'll play that again at the end of the show. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on in the news uh, right now. There's, um, in terms of love and gay marriage, et cetera, uh, right now there's a judge, a federal judge in Oklahoma struck down their gay marriage ban, uh, um, just today actually. Um, and so, uh, but they won't allow people to get married just yet, just like it was in California where they wouldn't allow them to get married right away, but it was, um, allowed eventually. Um, and uh, in his ruling, he said, quote, it's an arbitrary, irrational exclusion of just one class of Oklahoma citizens from a governmental benefit. And it's an amazing turn of events in Oklahoma, because Oklahoma is probably one of the most, or not probably, it is one of the most anti-gay states in the country. I mean, they have tried to put every conceivable gay, anti-gay law on record, um, you know, any chance they could. So um, it is unfortunately a um, an issue there. Um, hopefully they're going to get that fixed. We'll see what happens. But um, so the good thing is, though, it's been ruled unconstitutional because it's federally uh, recognized as a, as a right. So now, so fortunately, um, people are going to be able to get married eventually in Oklahoma um, and not including Oklahoma and Utah. Um, 27 states still have, have constitutional prohibitions on same-sex marriage. Four of them, Indiana or four additional ones, Indiana, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, uh, and Wyoming do not permit it through state laws. Okay. So there are currently 43 same sex lawsuits in courts. So 27 of those are in federal court and, um, Oklahoma is just one of the many going on right now. Um, there's been several people who've sued and as a result of that's them suing, they, this U S district judge has, uh, turned overturned the, uh, the law in, in um, Oklahoma. So fortunately, um, you know, it just looks like to me, it's just a matter of time and it's like a bunch of dominoes are just falling down, you know, like toy soldiers, that song goes, they all fall down. <laughs> like toy soldiers. Ah, Martika. Anyway, <laughs> do you remember that song? Uh, anyway, so this they're falling down like dominoes and just one by one by one by one because once you get the momentum going, once you get the on the right side of the law, once people are aware and you know have come to the conclusion of what's right, and and just because it is right, it eventually just topples over any other argument you can make. You can't argue against what's right um, forever. Um, it's, it's just simply a matter of time, a matter of people actually uh, stepping up to the plate and actually making themselves heard about these things. So it is just a matter of time, and I'm sure Oklahoma will, you know, in no time be another state that's going to actually have gay marriage. So um, also, or meanwhile, uh, around the country, um, you know, including talking about gay marriage, a U.S. congressman named Sean Patrick Maloney is about to marry his longtime partner. Um, and there's been several marriages going around uh, the country, people in Congress, you know, right now uh, who are getting married. So a couple of them got m married by Ruth Gator ben Ginsburg, uh, Bader Ginsburg and from the Supreme Court. Uh, so it's wonderful and it's just, you know, it's pissing off. So it's, it's pissing off all the right people, basically all the right people are getting mad about all these gay people getting married. And it's just, it, it just turns my heart into to rainbows and lollipops. You know, the, the matter they get, the happier it makes me because it just means that we're winning this fight. And as I've always said all along, and I said years and years ago, since Massachusetts started, first started this in, I think, 2000, they were the very first state to offer gay marriage um, legally. I've said it's just a matter of time, and it's, time is proving me right. Um, and, I, you know, after Doma was overturned this last year, thanks to Edie Windsor's case, it has been just a, you know, a full-on assault on bigotry, on anti-gay people and uh, people who use their Bible as a weapon instead of using it for the right reasons. So anyway, um, there was also a story I read about um, 
uh, Methodist Church in Northern Indiana, actually, uh, it says it's divided, and as much as 80% of the con- congregants have left the church after a popular gay choir director was forced to resign, and a respected church lay leader was fired for his support of the choir director. His name was Adam Fraley, um, who worked for the United Methodist Church in Alexandria, Indiana, for six years and attended with his partner. Um, but when a new minister took over the church last year, he said that he resigned because of pressure about his sexual orientation and the disagreement over whether he should should have been allowed to keep his job um, has basically caused a divide between the church and the members uh, of the church, which has about you know they 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 have a lot of members and according to Fraley that they began last year when the church's former pastor left to take a leadership position with the Methodist Church's uh, governing council. And the interim minister made it clear that he was very uncomfortable with Fraley's sexual orientation. And uh, Fraley, who was previously married and had one daughter, told um, told people that uh, they'd repeatedly questioned him about reconciling with his former wife and made observations about biblical values and trying to change him back to get it straight as if he ever were to begin with, you know, and, and so basically this new pastor or director was, was someone who was a homophobe and was trying his hardest to turn this gay man straight. Um, so that, he wouldn't be a representation of that church's quote unquote values or whatever. So anyway, um, ultimately, um, he, um, ultimately he, um, was informed that his services would no longer be needed because, um, he was, uh, he neglected his duties as a lay leader, the guy that helped him out or whatever. So anyway, you know, this isn't surprising at all uh, on one hand, because, you know, it's very typical that a church like at any church, especially a Methodist church or something, would be against gay people and try to oust them, even if they've been a member of that church for so long. Um, but what is surprising is that the congregation walked out on the new pastor uh, after they fired Adam Fraley for being gay. Um, they didn't care. The The congregation didn't care that he was gay. They, he was a good choir director and people liked him. He was liked and, and, and lauded for his performance and everything else. So it's ridiculous to get rid of him just because of who he, who, you know, he has a relationship with. It's just ridiculous. So, um, that's the good news about that. So it's a little bit of good news in, in America today about gay issues. Um, and then, there's also, you know, on the other hand, there's also a lot of, uh, in Nigeria right now, there's a new anti-gay law. Um, it's called, you know, which is called the Jail the Gays Bill. Um, and it's basically putting anyone into prison whom uh, would kiss another man or a woman or whatever, you know, someone of the same sex, or say they were gay, or say they wanted to marry someone who was gay, or just even saying it would put them into to jail. Um, and you know, these kinds of things are really human rights issues. And unfortunately, very little actually, um, changes as a result of, uh, just people being outraged about it. You actually have to do something about it, but what can we do over here in America? Is there something way over there in Africa, I guess, send the money, but what's that going to do? I mean, honestly, I, I mean, I have, I give them my support just as I do in Russia, but what can we do? And it just makes me feel helpless to do anything about changing, um, the tide of, of some countries, third world countries, basically, that absolutely hate gay people so much they put it on the law that they cannot um, they cannot be who they are. I mean, America has done that as well, um, putting it into law that we couldn't marry people of the same sex. But in those countries, I mean, their lives are in danger for being gay, and not that they're not here in some way, of course. But I mean, there the government it's government sanctioned bigotry and homophobia, basically, is what I. You know that's how I see it anyway, um, and I think that it's it's abhorrent and ridiculous. But I don't know. We'll see if that changes or anything. Um, and what else? Um, hold on a second. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah. So um, and also there's a uh, the Olympic Games right now. 
Um, he, uh, President Obama has decided he's going to skip the Olympic Games because of their uh, anti-gay stance, which I think is an amazing thing for the President of the United States to do. Um, and I think other countries should follow in the, the footsteps of Obama in that, that stance and absolutely do the same thing. Because, I mean, if we allow bigotry to stay and to fester or whatever, um, and to be accepted by the masses and the mainstream, then we're le- we're saying that it's acceptable to us. And unless it's acceptable to you, then you can't do that and expect people to uh, to respect you. I mean, honestly, if people are going to go around, you know, trying to uh, dictate what someone's lifestyle is, if you want to call it that, then, you know, I say that all hicks who live in trailers should be kicked out and forced to build their own fucking real houses, you know, with a real, um, you know, with a real foundation um, <laughs> and have, you know, get rid of all their pigs and their, whore, their cows and everything else and be forced to live in a civilized manner um, with an actual toilet that's not um, raised up above the floor. So, I mean, I'm just being mean, obviously, but I'm saying these people are the ones that I'll always hate gays the most and to say oh you can't love someone of the same sex well i'm going to say you can't you know i don't know you can't live in a trailer house and you can't marry your cousin i mean whatever so it's not any more right for me to say that they shouldn't be able to do the things they want to do that take away their freedoms than it is for someone to try to take away ours as gay people so whatever all right i'm going to try to play this song again before i go um i think i figured out what i was doing wrong there so let's try this again and see if we can get the song that's proper due okay here we go Well, maybe that's not right. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm sorry for this. Okay. Is this on? On? on. Oh, there we go. I think that was the way. Let's see if this works. There we go. Okay.
right. So that was the song Love Story by Jason Dotley. Be sure you you order it on iTunes. Um, I figured out what I was doing wrong. Apparently, I was uh, playing it to two different channels, on once on my computer, once on the mixer. So sorry about that. Now I know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> I just got this new mixer, so I wasn't quite uh, like a few weeks ago. So I'm not quite um, up to speed on how everything's working yet. But I, I think I've got my I think I've got it figured out now. Anyway, um. Moving on. So, uh, you know how I feel about Republicans, and you know I don't like them. Um, you know what I like even worse than Republicans generally are gay Republicans. Gay Republicans make no sense to me at all. They never have. That just makes no sense. And because of the majority of the Republican um, parties' stance on social issues, whether it be gays or interracial marriage or or abortion or whatever um you know they're so to the right that it's just bizarre to me that they would want to be aligned with someone so completely against who they are gay republicans i mean so um as a founder of the go proud which is a group for gay republicans the man's name is jimmy la salvia he served for a long time, um, you know, cheerleading for the Republican Party, whose policies, as you know, are very anti-gay uh, or anti-lesbian, anti-gay, anti-bi, anti-transgender, anti-intersex, anti-questioning, anti-anything, right? Um, and so he's always supported them vehemently. Um, but finally, he seems to have um, faced up to the reality of the situation. In a post on his website, he announced that he's formally renounced his membership in the Republican Party and declared his affiliation as no party. Why? You'll be astonished to learn that it's because he'll, he can't abide the tolerance of bigotry in the GOP. <gasps> oh, my God. That's a shock, such a fucking shock. Really? Oh, my God. The, he, he can't tolerate the bigotry in, in the GOP? Really? <laughs> what is, where's this man been for the past, I don't know, 40 years? I mean, honestly, how could someone be surprised by this? It's good that he has had a change of heart, but I mean, really, how stupid do you have to be to to feel um, to feel I don't know what's the word <laughs> to feel like they to just now realize that they are bigots. Um, anyone who's anyone knows Republican Party doesn't like gay people, and he's just not realizing that. Really, what a fucking moron! Uh, also, don't forget on Sunday to watch on HBO if you have HBO. Be sure to watch Looking. It's a new series, a new gay series uh, focused on a gay man living in, who just moved, I think, to San Francisco. And it's sort of a cross between um, girls on HBO and Sex in the City, but for gay men instead of women. And so it's not a replica, they say, but it's, it's, it's got the same kind of vibe or whatever. Meaning like, you know, you've got these three characters and they're, you're following their lives and they're single and trying to follow them. You know, what happens to them? One's older, sort of like Samantha on Sex and the City. One's like the every guy, which is the guy in the middle, the um, Philip Goff, I think is his name. Goff. He was one that used to work, uh, date Zachary Quinto. He used to be on Glee. Uh, the goth guy. Uh, and then there's another guy who's dating a black guy uh, who's an artist. Uh, and uh, so there is actual, actual, um, some representation of minorities. That's good. But as most, uh, as most uh, gay shows, um, there rarely are any minorities as a main character. They're usually only ancillary, just as they are looking apparently. But I'll still watch it, of course, because um, anything that's gay and it's good storytelling, I will definitely watch. And plus, it's got some sexy men in it, too. <laughs> the main guy, um, what is his name? I keep wanting to call him Philip, but it's not Philip. It's, uh, oh my God, what is the guy's name? It's uh, Goss or Goff or something. I think it's Goff. G-O-F-F is his last name, I think. Um, but what is his name? Let me. I've got to look him up now. I'm sorry. I've got to look him up. Um, Da, 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 da. Uh, but it's about 30 something gay men, 30 somethings gay men, which of which I am one, by the way, I am 38 and a half this month. So I will be 39 in June and I'm going to be, um, old <laughs> and only a year, only a year and a half. So, um, I can identify with the oldest guy, I guess, in the, in the show for sure, because, um, he's definitely the one that's, um, 
that I can probably relate to the most. Except he's he's not married. He's 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 single. But anyway, the guy's name, the main guy's name is Jonathan Groff uh, as Patrick. Um, he has a successful career as a video game developer, and he's in, living in San Francisco. And then there's Frankie J. Alvarez as Augustine, who's an artist's assistant and Patrick's best friend. And then there's Murray Bartlett as Dom. Murray Bartlett, what was he in? So I've totally seen him in things before. I swear to God he's gay, but I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was on Sex and the City. Yeah, he was on an episode of Sex and the City where um, – where, where, um, where Carrie um, kind of falls in love with a new gay friend, you know, and you know she had um her best gay friend Stanford, right, who was kind of an atypical gay guy, you know, or a- anti stereotypical gay guy, is what I should say. You know, he wasn't exactly particularly pretty or or in great shape or anything or competent, and so she meets this really confident, very sexy um guy in the know gay guy and she falls in love with him and not falls in love but you know what i mean falls in love with as, as a friend with him and they end up going all around the city and everything else and anyway so he uh he played that friend of hers um in that one episode and i'd seen him in other things as well but he's very good looking i don't know if he's really gay or not but he plays gay in the uh in the show so um but i like him i think he's very good looking um and also we're gonna have scott bakula on the show if you know who scott bakula is he was on quantum leap i've always thought he was so good looking by the way scott bakula had the biggest crush on him during during the quantum leap series and uh, he was also of course on star trek uh enterprise i think he was on enterprise was it enterprise see i'm not a star trekky trekkie so i'm not really sure i think he was enterprise he was on it was the one no, it wasn't Enterprise. That was um, Baldy. <laughs> Enterprise was the one with, uh, Phil, um, oh my God, we can see his face, but I can't think of his name. You know who I'm talking about. Um, oh my God, it's a shame I can't remember his name because I love him as an actor. I can't remember his name, but the guy that played, you know, the captain in Enterprise. There's Enterprise, and then there was, um, what was the last one? I, yeah, Phil, Scott Bakula was in the very last one. Whichever the Star Trek series, the last series was, it wasn't Enterprise, but it was something else, something else. And it was like a prequel or whatever, I think. That's the one he was in. But anyway, I digress as usual. But he's in it. And then Russell Tovey as Kevin uh, is in it. And several other people are in it that you're going to know. So it's going to be really cool. It's eight episodes really cool <laughs> it's eight episodes long in the first season um and uh so that's good so hopefully it'll it'll be picked up and because you know there's not a whole lot of gay tv on anymore or gay series on television or whatever whether it's on hbo showtime or on regular television um because i don't know why that is but it just seems as if they're um missing um a huge there's a huge gap in the in the television arena for gay people. I mean, and I know Ella DeGeneres is, is supposed to be developing a new gay sh- show or series for NBC, I think. But after Will and Grace left, there really wasn't much gay stuff on. And there were a couple of shows that tried last season or the season before last, like one was called Partners, which really sucked and which is by the same guys that did Will and Grace. It didn't, it wasn't good at all. They didn't have chemistry, the guys on the show and they, it just, it wasn't good. Uh, and then there's been some other shows that have tried as well. Um, there was another show with a gay character lead. I can't remember that I used to watch. It was canceled as well. But anyway, so they've gotten rid of all of them. And I don't know why that is, but because I think that uh, America, most of America, I mean, the ones on the edges, the ones with the brains, not the ones in the middle, uh, have a actual um, affinity for gay people, generally speaking, because they know gay people, generally speaking. Whereas in the middle of America, they usually don't know gay people because they're all so afraid of us because we're so we're such heathens and horrible people um but i think that's probably part of the reason why but yeah so anyway be sure you check that out that's that premieres on sunday the 19th on hbo so um be sure to check that out i'm definitely going to watch it and we're gonna talk about it on the show um i think we may talk about it on the crew as well i'm not sure next week as well but um Anyway, so that's all I really have to say. I just want to do a quick show. Um, and thanks for sticking with me with the uh, technical difficulties I had earlier in the show. But I figured them out now, so I know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> um, so be sure and follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, on my webpage, offlimitshow.com. Um, and, of course, I'm also on iHeartRadio and on Spreaker.com. 
And if you have any questions you want to email me, you can email me at Donovan, D-O-N-O-V-A-N, at offlimitsshow.com. Or you can tweet me or you can post me on Facebook and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. So thanks for listening and I will talk to you later. Have a good night.